That's some good dog, huh? Yeah, this is great. This is definitely good. We are standing uh, behind the Lafayette Head Home and Ute Indian Agency, which is one of the oldest sites in Colorado and a very important and multi-layered site, one that's sort of fraught with all the tensions of history in the borderlands. But it's a site that we're very excited to work with. And so we're making some early progress on this while also teaching people some hands-on preservation techniques. And this was built in 1854, settled by a former soldier from the Mexican-American War named Lafayette Head, who's thought to be the founder of Conejos, who led families from Ojo Caliente in Abiquiu, New Mexico, to settle the Conejos land grant. And there were several thousand Tabawache Ute and different tribes of Ute living right here in Conejos County. The complexity of the story is basically that you have a, a white soldier fighting in the Mexican-American War who marries what is said to be a Spanish woman living in Abiquiu. Abiquiu is a Genisaro settlement. Genisaros were Hispanicized indigenous people who were once held in, in servitude, forcibly. There were 11 captives held in this home. There's accounts of him considering them his children, but there are also accounts of how cruelly some of these children were treated. Lafayette Head's sister is enraged by the treatment of a young Navajo girl on this property. Um, she's treat treated very cruelly and she's locked up inside the building at night so she doesn't escape. She places the little girl on a horse and sends her off. The horse returns a few days later with a crudely written note saying thank you. And no one knows what happened to this girl at that time, but it turns out she ended up on the Ute Indian uh, reservation near Four Corners, and her story has continued to be told to this day. One of the stories that is told here, and this is, a, this is an account by someone who heard it firsthand from his great-grandfather, and then he shared it with me. Apaches would bring children to the front of the church and call for the priest to buy them. And the very first time this happened in Conejos, the priest came out and said, we, we are God's people and we do not buy children. And the Apaches slaughtered the children in front of the church. And a week later or so, they came back with more children and said, are you going to buy these children now? And so the priest bought the children and then distributed them through adoption to the families within the community. And so there are these adoption records in the church. People didn't want to see the kind of violence that was occurring but they also took advantage of it. I think in some ways this site is the founding of Colorado and the complexity of cultures that were coming together and the way that the territory was shaped as part of a larger Manifest Destiny project into which he was one individual who had a role in that. The majority of the building was largely destroyed in the 1970s and so I've been working on ways to share that history which is really complex and also in doing so, maybe try to preserve this building in some way. What we have left here is just a fraction of what was here at one time, but it's enough to tell the story and it's an important story to be told. One of the things I love about this project is not just creating a museum that's stuck in time, but creating a living place where people can interact, understand the history, but also hopefully think about what that means for the future and how do we not just lose those roots and become a, a beautiful place that people don't understand the history of or know how it came to be the way it is. There's a lot of opportunity to learn firsthand and how do you care for these places in a, in a real way. You could drive around this area and see all these buildings melting away back into the ground, which is beautiful in that sense, but um, this one is worth preserving and so this group of people came together under the auspices of Colorado Preservation Inc. To, to do this adobe workshop. Adobe is one of the oldest tangible traditions that we have in the southwest of the United States. The adobes are bricks made of a mixture of clay, straw, sometimes manure and water, and adobe it's always sun-dried. Behind me you can see a wall of an old house made of adobe. What they're doing here, the plastering, it's an old tradition that serves two purposes. 
It protects the buildings and gives beauty at the same time. And it's a tradition that sadly has been, it's almost gone, it's banished. The tradition of adobe, it's there, the knowledge, but it's dormant. And I do strongly believe that it's up to us, the younger generations of adoberos and adoberas and enjarradoras, to maintain the, the tradition. We say, we batid el soquete, you do it with your feet. And there's a sound that the soquete, the clay makes. Once that sound is, you know it's ready. You know, the sound with your foot. This workshop we were focusing on mud plastering and putting the mud kind of in like spots that really needed to be filled in. Um, people also worked with wooden trowels and metal trowels and understanding like the consistency or ratios with like adobe mud and getting a sense of that and mixing. And then understanding the historical like relevance of this space because it's, it's a very complex. This used to be my uh, former home. Uh, I was uh, born and raised here. I had a wonderful childhood here. Uh, we used to find uh, uh, old coins uh, as a family. Nobody had to tell me. Uh, uh, it kind of like the, it uh, spoke to me uh, as I was growing up uh, throughout the years, uh, what it was all about. This place deserves uh, to be recognized. It's a very special place. Taking a, a U.S. history class, the history is told from an Eastern perspective, right? The 13 colonies, uh, as though nothing was happening in this part of the world. But to be able to kind of reframe that around what's happening in the valley, northern New Mexico, as it becomes sort of part of different systems over time. Started learning a little bit more about the Lafayette Head House. Very happy now that it's one of Colorado's most endangered places, which despite the name means that it's, it's on track to be saved and preserved for uh, years to come. If adobes are well preserved, they can outlive you for generations. I think it's very important to maintain the community involved and you get a lot of work done. I guess I'm always heartened by what happens when people come together to accomplish something. Just seeing people take care of one another and meet each other where they're at, I think is really heartening. It's a history of community. The Native American um, tribes that were here, the Hispanos, um, you know, the, the uh, Anglos that, that came, and just, you can, imagine, you can just imagine the contention, but also so much that grew out of that. You really can't have those conversations if you don't know, right, your history. And I think that's one of the things that has been missing. A lot of them, uh, elders are, are, are passing without us capturing all of their stories. Um, and so I really think this is great to have this um, restored and to just not only bring attention to kind of what an interesting area this is, but also to remind the people who came from here that these are your roots, you know, the good, the bad, the, the everything. And it's just, I think, important for us to keep that alive. It's not until we know that that we can have those conversations and think about, you know, who we are. And then it's kind of the, the healing and the reconciling and, and, and moving forward. I actually got to, um, what do you call it, dance around in the mud, you know, kind of mix it with my feet. Uh, so it was really fun. And I think this is one of the things that I've uh, enjoyed about it is this community. There's something about working together um, and helping someone else that really feeds the community and, and makes it you know, grow. It wasn't so much about putting the plaster on the wall as much as it were, were the conversations that people had around the mud pit and while they were side by side putting the mud on the wall and the things they shared and the kind of connections that are made that way that you're community building, not only building a building. And we we're meant to do that. And so if you grow up, wherever you grow up in the world, and you're completely disconnected from it, you're probably not very many generations of someone who actually did that. Um, and when you do it for the first time, I think it makes sense. I think that's why people love it. People say, hey, Sandro, I don't know why I find these very soothing, very working with the, with the earth, no? It's very spiritual. And my opinion is that 
It's because we're working with the four elements. In many cultures, you know, in ceremonies, that's the first thing that prayers that are done towards, you know, when there's going to be the start of something, of creation or ceremony, is the four elements and the four cardinal points. And in an adobe, you have the four of them. Tierra, agua, aire, y fuego. And you need all those to work with adobe. <laughs>